That's it. That's it. That's all you get. That's all you get. Like three seconds. Can you tell? Can you tell if it was him? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It'd be cool if it was him. So this is allegedly the only known footage of Henry Thomas. If you're unfamiliar with the name Henry Thomas, you might not be too unfamiliar with his music. He was an incredibly influential musician, offered a peek into the repertoire of 19th century musicians. Uh, but as a person, he, he's pretty elusive. There's not a lot known about him. He has recordings that date from 1927 through 1929, and there's only one really low quality photo of him. And then as of a few years ago, maybe some footage. The clip comes from a 1931 German film. They were documenting a medicine show. There is a snake charmer who was evidently being uh, serenaded by maybe Henry Thomas. It seems like a wild speculation. I mean, how many musicians played in the medicine shows? What are the odds that these guys from Germany caught one as famous as, as Henry Thomas? Why has it gotta be Henry Thomas? Couldn't, couldn't it be anybody? So if we're playing the game of wild speculations that this random guy in a three second clip just might be the most influential blues singer that we know nothing about. Let's play that game. Let's compare this footage to other influential blues singers from the 1920s and we'll see how it sizes up. All right, let's compare this still to Charlie Patton, another elusive but very iconic blues singer. I don't think so. All right, how about uh, Robert Johnson? Okay, I don't think that one matches very well. I also don't think it really works in the time frame. Jim Jackson recorded for Vocalin in this time frame. Um, let's look at Jim Jackson. Honestly, maybe. Honestly, maybe. There's something about his eyes. I could see it and his, and his body type. It's a very similar guitar. It's like a really similar guitar. That's interesting. The binding looks the same. What if it was Jim Jackson? That'd be crazy. All right, we're gonna put Jim Jackson on in the maybe in the maybe pile. It's kind of not fair to just pick famous blues singers. It could have been anybody. As so many musicians were working for these medicine shows. Let's just look at some random pictures of random musicians from the era. How about this picture? Old guy, roughly the same age. He's got facial hair, both parlors, but that's a pretty small little parlor. All right. Mm-hmm. How about uh, this one? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay. Here's the interesting thing. He's got the harmonica rack thing going on. Not the crazy quills that um, the Henry Thomas is known for. A capo high up on the neck, just like his. Suit's better fitted though. That's a nice suit. Let's look at let's look at the real Henry Thomas again. Hmm. Alright, I'm seeing more things than I saw before. Capo, high on the neck again. Strap. Uh going across the shoulder to the end of the headstock. But the undeniable feature is that quills rack. Now, this picture of Henry Thomas is pretty crummy, obviously, but the shape is exactly the same. It doesn't have any details, um, but there's not a lot of detail in this picture at all. It's just a really crappy picture. You know, the picture is just too crummy to really get an idea of his facial features. Um, we had some really nice pictures in the in the other examples, but the guitar is pretty similar. It almost doesn't look as small as the one in the uh, as in the real Henry Thomas picture. Hmm. So here's the facts. Henry Thomas recorded in 1927 through 1929, and he would have been roughly around this age. He recorded for Vocalin, which was the race records company under Brunswick Records in Chicago. Brunswick was then located at Wabash Avenue, which is currently the Columbia College of Art and Design building. Apparently, at this part of the documentary, they're on Maxwell Avenue, which is a mere 15 minutes from Brunswick Records. So that's kind of cool. I, I could hear the argument, you know, he recorded from 27th to 29. Uh, this documentary is from 31. The crossover isn't 
perfect. Uh, but you know, I've recorded in Minneapolis and it doesn't mean every time I go there, I'm going to record again. Sometimes I go there and I'm just going to play a show or go to a show, you know, evidently that's what this guy's doing too. He's, he's, he's working the, the medicine show circuit. The issue is his life before and after his recording sessions just weren't well documented. Some say he died in 1930, although Mac McCormick, who's kind of a fanatic of Henry Thomas, claims to have seen him down in Houston in like 49 or someone who matched his description. It's like we're looking for a suspect. It's just like, what? What are we doing? It's still cool that people are thinking of Henry Thomas all these years later, trying to fill gaps in his story, lift his work. What do you think? Leave a note in the comments. Was this news to you? Did you know about this footage? Do you think it's him? Do you think it's the random guy? Who do you think it is? Take a vote on it. I don't know. This video was actually inspired by a series I'm doing over on Patreon called Rare Radio. Every week I dive into a record from my collection and we, we dig into the history of the artists and styles, as well as a little bit about the story of how I found the record. If you like this video and you want to support another one just like it, Patreon is the best and most fun way to do that. But if you need to think about it a little more, watch this video next while you do it. Thanks.